Good morning. Oh, at least it's morning for me. Um, all of you Nashville folks, I am glad here today to have the opportunity or the privilege of being able to share a Sunday School lesson. Um, today we are beginning a new study, and it begins in the book of Isaiah. And as I like to do when I start a new book is to see what comes before it and get some background to see uh, something about the writer and about what is being told to us. So Isaiah begins the section of prophetical books. There are 17 prophetical books from Isaiah to Malachi. There are four major prophets and 12 minor prophets. And the difference of their importance is not their importance, but their length because there are short ones and there are long ones, but they are all important. Prophets were God raised up, excuse me, prophets were men that God raised up during the dark days of Israel's history. They were always an Israelite. Their chief duty was to deal with the moral and religious life of his own people during his day. A prophet was never sent when the nation was walking in obedience to God. All their writings were rebukes for their bad condition of sin, mostly idolatry, and the judgment that would come because of it. He also included foretelling about future events involving Israel. They were fearless men, calling men away from idols back to God. And the definition of a prophet is given to us in scriptures in Deuteronomy 18, verses 18 and 19, which I am not going to read because of time. Some interesting facts about the book of Isaiah that I just really got excited about is that Isaiah's writing is in two parts with different emphasis. It is the work of one man with two messages. Because of this, it is believed that there was possibly two writers in Isaiah instead of just Isaiah. But at the conclusion is that it is all Isaiah. He just had two different messages. And the first part pictures Israel, and the last part pictures Jesus. This is really fascinating to me. The divisions of Isaiah are very interesting in that they are like a miniature Bible. The Bible has 66 books. Isaiah has 66 chapters. The Bible has 39 books in the Old Testament. Isaiah has 39 chapters in the first part, which deals with law and the government of God. The Bible has 27 books in the New Testament. Isaiah has 27 chapters in the last part, which deals with grace and the salvation of God. The Old Testament opens with God's case against man because of his sin. Isaiah opens the same way in Isaiah 1.18, which we'll see in just a moment. The Old Testament ends with prediction of Christ's coming kingdom. The end of the first part of Isaiah closes with the prophecy of the coming king of righteousness and the redemption of Israel. The second part of Isaiah opens with the voice of one crying in the wilderness. And the New Testament begins the same with John the Baptist. Isaiah ends with the vision of a new heaven and a new earth, and the New Testament ends the same way in Revelation. With all of these interesting facts, we have much to learn from Isaiah. And this will bring us to our lesson from chapter 1 with a focus on verses 10 through 20. Isaiah was a prophet of the southern kingdom of Judah. He lived at the time that the northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed by Assyria and taken into captivity. Now the Assyrians are after the kingdom of Judah. Um, now we see that what has transpired just prior to this is um, an encounter that's not given to us in this scripture, but you learn it in other places, like in the Kings, for example, that King Hezekiah has gone into the temple and he has prayed. And God has sent him a prophet 
which is Isaiah, with encouraging words that Assyria would never take Judah. In fact, they wouldn't even enter the streets of Jerusalem. However, if the kingdom of Judah did not turn to God, another nation, Babylon, would take them into captivity, which we do know takes place. God was giving them, though, a second chance. He takes them, as it were, into the courtroom and gave them an opportunity to answer his charges, to hear his verdict, and appeal for mercy of the court. It causes us today to go into God's courtroom and see God's judgment that comes to nations that let Satan use them to turn away from God. Let's hear what Isaiah has to say in today's lesson. And I'm going to read from verses 1 through 20 because of having the whole content here. It begins with Isaiah saying, This is the vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw during the reigns of these kings, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. This is his message. Listen, heavens, and pay attention, earth, for the Lord has spoken. We notice here that Isaiah says that God has said to him that this goes even beyond Israel, but to all of the heavens and earth. And God is putting out these statements to say, I have raised children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's feeding trough, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. And what we can see from that there is when we see the donkey and the ox, these are two animals that are not considered usually to be very smart. And God is comparing them and saying, even they know how to obey and listen to their masters, but Israel no longer seems to understand. And then it continues, and we'll see from here what I have discovered and called um, the appearance of spiritual apostasy, which I believe, and I, I think if you look closely, we are definitely in the state of apostasy today. O oh, sinful nation, and we could put in here our own nation, not just Israel, as we see here. O oh, sinful nation, people weighed down with iniquity, brood of evildoers, depraved children, they have abandoned the Lord, they have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned their backs on Him. Why do you want more beatings? Why do you keep on rebelling? The whole head is hurt, and the whole heart is sick. From the sole of the foot even to the head, no spot is uninjured. Wounds, welts, and festering sores, not cleansed, bandaged, or soothed with oil. Your land is desolate, your cities burned with fire. Foreigners devour your fields before your very eyes. A desolation demolished by foreigners. Daughter Zion, Zion refers to Jerusalem, which is the place where the kingdom of Judah was. Daughter Zion is abandoned like a shelter in a vineyard, like a shack in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. If the Lord of hosts had not left us a few survivors, we would be like Sodom, we would resemble Gomorrah. And this is the charges he brings. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What are all your sacrifices to me? asked the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings and rams and the fat of well-fed cattle. I have no desire for the blood of bulls, lambs, or male goats. When you come to appear before me, who requires this from you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing useless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons and Sabbaths and the calling of solemn assemblies. I cannot stand iniquity with a festival. I hate your new moons and prescribed festivals. They have become a burden to me. I am tired of putting up with them. God is saying that these things now are being done as a ritual, but not from the heart that loves the Lord. 
So without repentance, there is going to be no hope. And this is what we're going to see. When you lift up your hands in prayer, I will refuse to look at you, even if you offer countless prayers. I will not listen. Your hands are covered with blood. So, what should you do? Wash yourselves. Cleanse yourselves. Remove your evil deeds from my sight. Stop doing evil. Learn to do what is good. Seek justice. Correct the oppressor. Defend the rights of the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. Come. Mercy is available. And God says, Come. Let us discuss this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they will be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword from the mouth of the Lord has spoken. If we listen to what has been said here, we could so easily apply this to the United States of America. How much of this is what is happening today? And God is appealing to us the same. He is saying, repent, turn from your wicked ways, and then I will hear you and I will forgive your sins and I will heal your land. We've been praying 2 Chronicles 7, 14. The problem is it's not the praying. As he has said to them here, he says, I won't listen to your prayers anymore because you're not praying from the heart. You don't really mean it because if you really mean it, that means you have to get yourself in a right condition before me. And that is to repent from your wicked ways and turn back to God. I remembered as I reading here all about the prophets, of something that has been very relevant to me today, and that in Joel, a, a small prophet who, who has a lot of great things to say, tells us about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we know that the Holy Spirit came to fill all new believers, as Jesus had predicted that he would, a prophecy from Jesus is that the Holy Spirit would come and indwell the lives of all of his disciples. And... Um, that took place on Pentecost, right after Jesus uh, ascended. Uh, and here is what Joel says. He says, After this, I will pour out my Spirit on all humanity. Then your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your old men will have dreams, and your young men will see visions. I will even pour out my Spirit on the male and female slaves in those days. Joel is telling us in the last days when the Holy Spirit is poured out, which has been now over 2,000 years, that men and women are going to become prophets. Not the kind of prophets that we see here in the Old Testament because they did foretelling and they also told what was taking place at that time plus in the future. But what we are to do is to be forth tellers. Jesus gave us everything that we needed to know. And he gave us a commission. And he says that as you go about wherever you are, just as these prophets were to tell about the people, their people, where they were, we are to do the same thing. Men and women. It is not just given to the preachers and the deacons and the uh, scholars of today. It has been given to every believer in Jesus Christ is to take the message that we know that we have learned. And he says, until he comes again, he's gone to prepare a place for us to be with him forever in heaven. And until he comes again, we are to be telling the world who doesn't know they've been redeemed, that they have been redeemed, that Jesus paid the price for us as sinners. And that now we, just like those who've been given a reprieve through a court, then God has done that for us through Jesus. He made another way. He paid the price for us so that we could have the freedom to be out of the bondage of sin and become a child of God. And as a result of that, then we can tell others. And we are probably the last generation to take that good news to the world. So I appeal to us to listen 
to Isaiah and listen to Joel and see that God has commissioned us, and this applies to us today just as well as it did to those in the day of Isaiah. I thank you very much, and God bless you all.